are back on the air, and we are back on the air at Gray, Gray, and Gray. And again, uh, with Kelly Berardi. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Having so much fun. Our next guest is Nicole Carlin of Nicole Carlin Interiors. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Uh, tell us about uh, Nicole Carlin Interiors. Um, well, I really have loved interiors my whole life. Um, it just took me 40 some years to figure it out. Um, I, ever since I was young, I liked planning my own spaces, choosing my own finishes, decorating, for lack of a better term. And um, I did a variety of different things throughout my life, but uh, it wasn't until about two years ago that a friend who I was helping uh, do her home approached me and said, you know, you're really good at this, and you really love it in a way that I've never seen before, and, and you should give it a try. And so um, I spent a little time thinking about that and how it would work, and um, took a few classes um, at a school in Boston that specializes in interior design. And I said, you know what? I think I'm ready to go. And now you're uh, hitting your one-year anniversary, right? I am. I am. Uh, what do you know now that you wish you would have known a year ago? Uh, let's see. Um, I guess uh, understanding sort of how the year goes in terms of what people's interests are, the busy time of year, and being more prepared for that. Um, I found that the fourth quarter is really when everybody wants their work done in their home and to be ready for the holidays. And so this year, I think I'll be um, more prepared for that. And of course, at the same time, as a business, you're trying to wrap up your year-end stuff and you're trying to do your personal year-end um, holiday preparations. So I think that I wish that I had um, realized that. Um, everything is, I'm kind of a planner, so I have to say that's about it. I think that everything has really gone exactly as I had planned it to. Um, it's I, unusual for an entrepreneur to say that. I, I, I think part of it was was that I set the, the bar really low <laughs> in terms of my own expectations. Um, but I, I had to keep it real. I think, you know, as a mother of three, um, you know, your family comes first. And so I set very real expectations for myself. But I said, you know, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to take some classes. But at the same time, I'm going to kick this off and see who comes to me. And I'm not going to be aggressive about it. I'm just going to let it to me and if I have two or three clients um, by the end of the year and I've done some work I'll be happy and I really exceeded that and I, I couldn't be any more grateful for having the experience that I had um, and also having a viable business. What's your experience uh, before this? Um, well I went to school for communications and I actually studied broadcasting um, and that was what I did for a number of years upon graduation, and I loved it. Uh, it just isn't very family friendly. My husband and I moved here um, from a small town in upstate New York um, 17 years ago. And when we moved, it was very hard for me to make that market jump from a teeny tiny market to the, to the big number, Boston's the fifth largest market in the country. So, um, and he was starting his own business, which is a whole other story. And I decided that um, I needed to make some adjustments. So I went into um, a human resources role at a family company for about six years that provided me the nine to five that I needed. Um, and I liked working with people and communicating, so I felt like I was using my degree that way. And um, my son had some medical issues, so I stepped away from that for about five years. And in that time, um, I discovered that every single day I was running around in my free time um, doing things in my own home and researching and just putting an incredible amount of effort into it. And um, it wasn't until other people started asking me to do the same for them that, I, that my friend put into my head, you know what, maybe you should try and make a run of this. How do you keep up with the all the changing trends and things like that? Are you always just looking at catalogs and going to stores and things? Or do you prefer the bigger stores or the small boutiques? What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, there's so many different sources and you know, all you need is your smartphone to yeah. really keep in touch with what's new out there. Um, I think it's a combination of social media and picking sites that you like. 
um, to keep up with um, places like the Design Center in Boston and mm -hmm. being in touch with what they're doing and visiting there frequently, which I am fortunate enough to do when I'm there shopping for clients. And, um, and then I think just being out there and looking around and seeing what stores are doing. There's nothing like being in a store right. and um, being able to pick something up and, and see it. And then being able to go back to your client and say, trust me, I have sat in that chair. It is fabulous. It is worth the money. Um, so, you know, you can do the things online for the look. But as far as being able to have the actual experience with items, um, you need to be, you know, out and about. And in terms of time utilization and cost of goods, it can be less expensive to use a designer, can it? This is correct. And doing it yourself. This is correct. And this was part of uh, why, you know, there were a number of different things that gave me the confidence to say I'm going to go for it. And one of them was that when I was out and about doing things in my own home, I was looking at other women who were in my age and my situation, and they were out there making expensive decisions, like buying carpet or choosing paint, and they were in the store just talking to the salesperson who had never stepped foot in their home, who had no idea what the other things, goals that they had to be, you know, tying things together, that sort of a thing. And um, so I really marketed my business based towards those people um, and saying, I'm not the designer who comes in and takes over your life and tells mm -hmm. you what your style should be. I am the confidant who you can bring in who will tell you like it is, be able to stand back and have that 30,000 foot view of your home, your budget, and say here are the things that I think that you should do to get to where you want to be.